Zeit TV presents. What is the Zeitgeist Movement? An explanation from a member of the Zeitgeist Movement, not from the official Zeitgeist Movement website. Money and trading in the market social system is the dominant force in the world today. The problem with trading, however, is trading results in scarcity, and scarcity results in trading. Scarcity results in social problems like violence. Trading is seen as a perfect, utopian, equal exchange, yet it is actually two parties, both attempting to use deception, to gain the better end of the deal. This results in a hierarchical society and according to the book The Spirit Level by Richard Wilkinson, the greater the gap between the rich and the poor, the worse the general health of that society. This is due to stress. We're not talking about a friendly game of table tennis, or chess, we are talking about social competition. Social competition for money is stressful. Poverty is stressful. Actually servicing human needs with the use of science and the scientific method is actually bad for business. This is because peace, sustainability, technical efficiency, and abundance are the enemies of the market social system, for the love of money is the root of all evil. There is more than enough food produced in the world to feed everyone on the planet. Yet as many as 783 million people still go hungry. This is because business demands money to be made out of people, not meet their needs. This is called social system violence or structural violence, the deadliest form of violence is poverty. Only if you can afford your needs met do you meet your needs. Also products are built to break for repeat purchases, wasting natural resources. This is called cost efficiency or cost-cutting at every stage of production, to maximize monetary profit. Pollution also results from business attempting to save money instead of arranging for a proper disposal. Business and corporations only meet the needs of people who can afford it, and even then they don't actually want problems solved. Technology, which is too good, is bad for business. Nikola Tesla for example, the technology he came up with was outside the context of the market, therefore he had to be shunned. Another example, if a cure for cancer was truly discovered, that would also be bad for business. The medical or healthcare establishment makes money out of continually servicing someone's sickness. If you cure someone of a disease permanently, you can't make any more money out of them. So the Zeitgeist movement advocates a new social system, called a resource-based economy, to solve these problems. A resource-based economy is defined as the scientific method applied to social concern. It would be an open-source social system, free of copyright, free of war, where the focus of the social system would be to solve human problems and the maintenance of natural environments that support human and animal life. Instead of property, people would have access to what they require, which would result in abundance. People would use an item and return it when they no longer need it, like a public library, or those street libraries that are popping up around the place. It is not owning material possessions or having lots of money that leads to happiness, beyond what possessions people need to live, it is actually quality social relations that leads to happiness. One day I'll be rich for making these actual things in my factory. And then you won't be rich and I'll be non lonely because I'll have money to keep me company. That's a fucking bad plan. At present, 1% of the population owns 50% of all wealth. This scenario leaves the public fighting with each other, while the rich have all the power to control the public through various methods, like the media or the legal system. What is unreasonable about the current market system is that it expects people to behave in poor conditions that don't meet their needs, this means the police effectively punish the poor for being in a situation that they can't help be in. Human behavior is influenced by a combination of someone's genetics and their environment. It is poverty that results in crime. Yet when an entity like a corporation becomes big enough, they become above the law and get away with making money out of destroying people's health. Alcohol, cigarettes, casinos, cults like Scientology, such corporations don't feel any guilt for making money out of destroying people's lives and health. Also, there would be no intellectual property or copyright in a resource-based economy either.
This reality has already allowed any combination a human can come up with. So copyright is actually a form of plagiarism. Someone is plagiarizing reality when something is put under copyright, whether it is a piece of music, a video, a painting, a technical blueprint, etc. There is no such thing as an original work, which is the foundational idea behind copyright law because this reality is connected everywhere all the time. Also in a resource-based economy, there would be no jobs or employment as we know it today. The philosophy of a resource-based economy is to work smart not hard. Meaning machine automation would be embraced so people are free to live their life without working essentially as a slave for an employer. Speaking of slavery, money is debt. Basically every dollar in existence is actually a loan plus interest attached to it. So people are forced to work to pay off their debts and cover their costs of living. Yet it is impossible for all debts to be repaid because of the interest charged. If all debts were repaid, meaning all money given back to the bank, the bank would still demand interest. So the question becomes are people working to improve their lives and improve the lives of people, or are people working in pointless jobs, where we work hard essentially for no reason to service fictional debt plus interest? In a resource-based economy, abundance is the goal, so people would not be forced to work to pay off fictional debt and to cover their costs of living. It doesn't matter how hard someone works, in a market, someone will be poor due to the market being based on scarcity, debt plus interest. The economy is basically like a game of musical chairs. Instead, in a resource-based economy, people's needs would be supplied to them through the use of science and the scientific method. Also there would be no politics in a resource-based economy, as the book 1984 by George Orwell states, the object of power is power. Politics is concerned with an addiction to power and nothing more, politics does not solve problems. Science and technology solve problems. So, the bottom line is this. Given our current scientific understandings, the zeitgeist movement believes a better social system than the market is possible. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. One final thing to note about the Zeitgeist movement is that despite what some members of the Zeitgeist movement will claim, there is no official Zeitgeist movement. To me there is a difference between the Zeitgeist movement, meaning promoting peace, love and truth, and the so-called official Zeitgeist movement which holds the aggressive copyright of its materials that only appears to be against the market's oppression, yet might actually enforce some oppression of their own. An official zeitgeist movement implies the zeitgeist movement is hierarchical. You can't be for peace, love, truth and aggressively enforce copyright, the two contradict each other. The real zeitgeist movement works in a similar way to the activist group Anonymous. The zeitgeist movement is a decentralized movement, where if people understand the materials, they will naturally want to advocate or promote it. You are not paid to be a member of the Zeitgeist movement, nor do you pay to become a member. The Scientology cult has an official Church of Scientology. The Mormon cult also has a stance of being official. The Book of Mormon and Scientology's book, Diane Tix, are both under copyright. While some so called official Zeitgeist movement related content is under copyright, and that copyright is strictly enforced, for example, Peter Joseph's film Zeitgeist Moving Forward, which is one of the main vehicles for the Zeitgeist movement, the main book which describes the Zeitgeist movement, the Zeitgeist movement defined, realizing a new train of thought, is open source or is under Creative Commons as it should be. And people should be welcome to make open source content supporting the Zeitgeist movement without it being under the so-called official Zeitgeist movement banner.